Thanks, Ashley. Without further ado, we'll get started. As you can see, I don't have a boring PowerPoint for you. We're just going to jump in to AutoCAD Electrical. Not that PowerPoints are boring, of course, but we're just going to jump into the software and we're going to discuss not just differences between AutoCAD and AutoCAD Electrical, because there's a lot of commonalities as well, but benefits that you should be able to take, take care of as a controls engineer, electrical engineer, designer, drafter, that it offers over base AutoCAD. The nice part, as you can see right now, is that you are in AutoCAD. So there's a lot less learning curve for AutoCAD Electrical versus, you know, if, you're, if you've used AutoCAD all these years to create your controls drawings and you're looking for a more sophisticated package, obviously there's competitors out there. Um, but if you've been using AutoCAD, one of the benefits of Electrical is that it's still AutoCAD. If I go to the Home tab up here, as you can see, straight up AutoCAD tools. Starting at the Project tab, though, going over to the Conversion Tools tab, these are all dedicated AutoCAD Electrical tools. So I'm just going to start with throwing down a circuit. I'm going to introduce you to some nice drafting features. I'm going to introduce you to some cross-referencing between what we call parent and child components. And then we'll cover everything like we talked about on the website. We're going to go over panel drawings. I'm going to talk about three-phase drawings, circuits, reports, everything that electrical has to offer. Now I'm going to start with a simple drafting feature by adding a wire. <clears throat> and as you can see, if I take my crosshairs and place them in between my hot and neutral here and just pick my mouse button, it'll drop a wire down. Notice that the tie points come in automatically. You're going to see throughout this demonstration just pure drafting features that can save you a ton of time and a ton of energy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is insert a parent symbol. Out of the box with AutoCAD Electrical, you get a plethora of symbols. You're not going to have to create any proc switches or push buttons or relay coils. All of that's coming out of the box. We have IEC libraries, we have fluid power libraries. So I'm gonna start with a parent symbol being a relay coil. And I'm gonna drop it directly onto my wire. And this dialog box right here kind of replaces your standard insert edit dialog box when inserting a block. Notice that the tag comes in automatically. It's not like I have to manually place that text down or have to manually type anything in if it is a block with attributes. We have description fields you can fill in, just like with any other symbol. You probably have blocks, AutoCAD blocks right now, where you can fill in descriptions, where you can fill in tags and other things. I could type information in here, but we also have a list of commonly used phrases that we can choose from. You're going to notice that AutoCAD Electrical has a lot of features. It kind of knows, or at least old people like me didn't like to type a whole lot. So there's a lot of features where it will save you typing time. I'm going to attach a part number to this because one of the benefits later on when I'm done or right before I'm done is to run reports. One of those reports is a bill of material. So I want to place a part number down onto my symbol. And I can do this at the schematic level or the panel level, let's say if I started with the panel first, doesn't matter. And notice when I attach the part number that the pin information automatically fills in. If I were to attach a Siemens part number, the pins might be different and it will adjust accordingly. I'm gonna tell it where it's going as far as the enclosure is concerned and pick okay. And like I said, I'm just gonna throw a Quick circuit down here. And again, I get the same exact dialog box as I just received. And again, tag came in automatically. I can put in description lines of text, part numbering information.
and I'm going to attach a location code. In some of these part numbers don't have pin information, so I could manually fill these in. I could type in 12 and 14, whatever the case might be. And then I'll insert one more push button just to help complete this circuit. Notice each time as well, I'm not going to put in part number information description for every single symbol I drop in just to save some time. So I'll just select OK right here. Another nice drafting feature, obviously the wire, this wire right here broke at each connection point of my symbol. Can't do that in regular AutoCAD. I can draw regular wires multiple different ways. Maybe I'll draw a wire from here to here, and then maybe I'll draw one from here to here. And now I got to clean this up, obviously. Watch what happens when I delete this wire in between my two new verticals, and it also gets rid of the tie point as well. That's a manual process inside of AutoCAD. Now I'm going to insert a child symbol. This is the parent symbol that I dropped in. So I want to insert a normally open contact that gets tied back to this relay coil. Use the same library. Drop in an open contact. This dialog box looks a little bit different because it's a child symbol. Tag does not come in automatically like it did the other ones because I have to tell it who it belongs to. So it's in, in close proximity. I'm just going to pick it, and as you can see, it carries over all of the same information that I placed on the parent, and it tells me the cross-reference of where the parent is. So automatically notice that the parent symbol updated. That's not going to happen in regular AutoCAD. In the child symbol updated so it knows where each other are. Let me just throw down a pilot light to complete this circuit. And like before, I'll just pick OK here to save some time. Normally, I would fill all that good information in. Now I'm going to go to the next drawing in my project. And don't worry about um, the, some of these circuits. I, I'm just going for concepts here. So in other words, normally I wouldn't put another normally open contact. Obviously, going back to my parent symbol right here, but just for conceptual purposes, I'm going to drop that down. My parent symbol is on another drawing. I can't select parent or drawing, so I'm going to go look at the whole project. Who does this contact belong to? I want it to associate to here. All the information carries over, cross reference once again, updated. So it tells me on sheet four, line three, that's where the parent symbol is. I'll go back to my previous drawing. And you're going to see that the cross-reference has been updated at the parent level. No more manually having to, you know, update that. If I make a change, you're going to see when I make a change shortly, it will change across every single drawing that gets affected can't do that in regular AutoCAD. Another thing I can't do is, this is some of the error checking. The part number that I established to that parent symbol was only good for two contacts. Well, let's say, and I'll just put this in the middle of nowhere, let's try to say I try to assign a third one. I got carried away, I forgot how many I had already used up per that part number, whatever the reason. So I'll say, let me assign it to here. This is the error checking, some of the error checking that's built into AutoCAD Electrical, which we will not find, obviously, with regular AutoCAD. It knows, you know, that part number is only good for two contacts. It's not going to work. Normally, typically, what I would do here, I'd cancel right away. I'd go to my parent symbol and edit the part number so it reflects, in this case, a four-contact relay instead of just a two. Now, as you can see here, before I go there, 
AutoCAD Electrical really starts to pay for itself when you can reuse data. I'm going to give you a couple different scenarios on what we call circuits. And as you can see here, I've got this circuit and I've got this circuit. They're identical. Okay. Copy command. We have a copy circuit command. I'm not going to use the AutoCAD copy. I'm going to use the AutoCAD Electrical copy circuit command. I'll wrap a window around all these items because I have an identical scenario, let's say, in this project. So I'm gonna drop this down right here. I'll hit enter. And when you copy a circuit, notice all the tags update automatically. That's the benefit you get with AutoCAD Electrical. Anything that you had built into the symbol is going to get carried over as well. So in this case, you know, maybe I add a piece of text to it to differentiate it, but the part number is going to be there. If I want to use the same location code, that's going to be there. So I save all that time. I'm going to show you shortly how we encourage everybody, you know, and when I'm teaching a class especially, you want to save as many circuits as you can so you can use them throughout different drawings and projects. We do have the clipboard capability where you can copy something to the clipboard, paste it into another drawing. But if you know you're going to reuse some data over and over and over again, you save it as a circuit and you put it in your own custom library. Now, as you can also see, the wires that I dropped down here, you know, they don't match the size or the color, the one down here. Well, I can go to my change convert wire type command here. And all the wires, you're drawing wires inside of AutoCAD Electrical. It knows that it's a wire based on the layer that it's on. This is where your AutoCAD knowledge can help. AutoCAD Electrical takes full advantage of using layers. They use them for different purposes. You can create your own, you can modify them, or you can stick with the ones that are right out of the box. So if this wire should have been 18 red instead of 14 black, you know, I'm just going to select all of them that should be. And now I've easily moved them from one wire layer to another wire layer. As you can also see, this particular drawing has no wire numbers on it. And if I come over here, this wire, my hot, started from another drawing, and so did the neutral. I see the cross-reference that goes to sheet 3, line 32. So if I take a look at that through my surfer utility, let's go to the source of where this all began. So somebody did their due diligence, did a nice job here. We have wire number 309 that goes to another drawing, this particular wire and this one. So if I go back to the drawing over here, I'm going to run my automatic wire number utility so you can see the power behind that but you're also going to see the power behind being able to carry a wire from one spot to another. And when I say spot, it can be within the same drawing or it could be on different drawings, doesn't matter. You don't have to manually keep up with these anymore when you add or modify the position. So at this point, on my insert wire, wire number panel, I'm gonna to go to my wire number command right here. And I'm just gonna say drawing wide. And you're going to see instantly, I've got wire numbers across my whole drawing now. And as if you noticed, you could wire number the whole project. I just did this particular drawing. Or you can pick on individual wires. doesn't matter. But the beauty of it is I didn't have to manually type in a separate piece of multi-line text, a separate piece of text. I don't have to do any of that. I automatically took care of all the wire numbers right on the spot. In case some of you are wondering, are there different formats that you can use? Absolutely. I'm using the reference number, as you can see, for both my tag and my wire number. 
these could be sequential. These could have dashes in between. You could tie a layer to it. There's all sorts of ways that you can configure it to your standards. I just happen to be using this one. So if I go back to here, now as you can see, it's carrying wire number 309 over from sheet 3, line 32. <clears throat> I don't have to manually keep track of my wires anymore when I break them at one point and pick them up somewhere else. And like I said, it doesn't have to be in the same drawing. It could be in two different drawings. I'm going to jump over to a panel right now. I've got a new component that I inserted. Well, obviously, I've got a few new components. Well, let's say I want to add the components. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I just designed all my schematics. Now it's time to design the panel. Well, if I go over to my project manager and I take a look inside of my enclosure category, I'm going to go to the main panel. Obviously, this project has already been started. So I want to insert that relay, the, the, the we call them footprint symbols. The footprint symbols are the physical representation of your components. They're full scale, one to one, hopefully just like you're doing it now in regular AutoCAD. If it's a panel drawing, an enclosure drawing, that's where all your physical components go. That's nothing's going to change from that aspect. As far as inserting the symbols themselves, first I'm going to go to my panel tab up here and I'm going to select my schematic list. What schematic list does. And I can choose the whole project, or I could choose certain locations as well. I'm going to do everything. I'll do all the drawings. And what this is going to do is going to, this is going to bring up a complete list of every single component that I need to insert in the panel. And it's based off of what I've already placed at the schematic level. That doesn't mean that I couldn't start at the panel level as well and just do the opposite. I have several customers that you know, they would love to be able to start at the schematic level, but they can't for long lead items times or get a general size, a feel for how big it's going to be, whatever the case is. We don't care what your workflow. You can start at the schematic level or you can start at the panel level. When I started at the schematic level, like here, let's say, this brings me up that complete list that I was talking about. I just sorted the list or made sure it was sorted via the tag. Obviously, since this one has already been started, if I pick this mark existing, it's going to put an X next to everything that's already been inserted. And then I'm going to go the full bore here and say hide existing. And here's that relay that I just dropped in at the schematic level. So I want to insert the physical footprint symbol. So I'll pick insert. And this is what is right out of the Allen Bradley library. You're going to see some of these footprint symbols. Have a lot of detail. Some of them don't have much detail at all. It's from the manufacturer themselves. Autodesk just went to their websites and downloaded all of these. Is, is basically what it is. Anyway, it picks up all the information that I've already established at the schematic level right here. I wouldn't have to fill in because these symbols are linked together. If I pick OK right here, it brings up my list. And I could keep dropping these in as I see fit for my panel drawing. I'm going to close it out right now. So there is my footprint symbol. Now we call these smart panels, or AutoCAD Electrical does. And what they mean by smart is, is that, like you just saw, the footprint symbols are linked to the schematic symbol, which is beautiful because if you make a change to one, the other one updates automatically. Watch what happens here. I'm going to go back to the schematic parent symbol. I'm going to close this out. And remember when I originally set this up, I set it up for a two-contact relay. And it's an Allen Bradley. Well, maybe I want to keep it two-contact, change it to four. Maybe I want to change the manufacturer. So I'll go to Edit Component. And I'm going to go to the catalog lookup once again. And this time, I'm going to change it to a square D type X. I'll hit my search. 
I'll pick this very first one right here. It's a two normally open convertible contact. I'll pick OK. And then I'll say OK right here. It's going to ask me to update other drawings. Absolutely, I do. So it's got that footprint symbol on the panel drawing that is originally set up for Alan Bradley. There it is right there. It's updating the drawings. I changed the manufacturer altogether on that. So now if I go back, notice that it's a completely different footprint symbol because this is the one that belongs to Square D and not Alan Bradley. It's just a footprint symbol. It's a physical representation, but the software is smart enough to know, hey, there's a different footprint that's set up for this Square D part number than there is for the Alan Bradley. In this case, I can treat this like any other footprint symbol. Obviously, I'm just going to move this up here real quick just to put it in line with the rest of them. I can't do that with that regular AutoCAD. Think about the time that that would have taken you. You would have to delete the original one. You would have had to insert a new block that represents your square D. Anything that was tied to it as far as descriptions are concerned. Location codes. All of that you would manually have to do because they're not tied together. So as an example about that, let's say, okay, I got my part number. Everything's good, but I want to change the description. So I'll just type in station one here. So I'm doing this at the panel level. And it doesn't matter if I did this at the schematic level. The other one's going to update automatically. So I'll pick OK here. Update other drawings? Absolutely. So now if I go back to the parent symbol or one of the contacts, doesn't matter. As you can see, this has been updated as well. And that's what they mean by, you know, some of the ability of a smart panel. These are linked to your schematic symbols. You change one, the other updates automatically. That would be a complete manual process that I would have to perform in regular AutoCAD. Think of the time savings there. Now, I talked about circuits a little bit. I'm going to talk about more of them. Think of, let's see, pick on three-phase. This is pretty easy to pick on. Think of a drawing like this. All right, think about how long this would take you to do a regular AutoCAD. I got a bunch of wires. I got a bunch of three-phase circuits. Ideally, after I create this drawing for the first time, if I would have this scenario, let's say, you know, when I was doing this for a living, the company that I worked at, we always started with three phase. We always had three phase motors, no matter what the design was, who the customer was. So essentially, what I can do is create a circuit out of all of these components right here. So if I need them for another project, another drawing, I go to my library and I insert them in. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to start completely from scratch just to try not to fool anybody. Obviously, demo stuff, you have to have things done in order to speed up the process. But let's say I want to add a brand new drawing to this project. You'll be able to see how long or how much quicker things can take. I'll start a new drawing. Let's see, my last one, I believe, is 11. Yes, it is. So I'm going to say start a new drawing. And I'll just call this ACAD E-12. And I'm going to give it a sheet value of 12. I could put in a drawing description. What you would normally do here is put in, you know, a description of what it's going to be it could be an io drawing could be a three phase whatever and i'm going to pick okay it creates the drawing for me think about this for a minute creates the drawing for me 
And I chose a template that had predefined reference numbers in it, but notice that it automatically adjusted to the sheet number. Now it's sheet 12, line 0, 0, 0, 0001. If I were to do the next one, it would be 13, 14. But every single time you create a new drawing, that's already going to be there. There's multiple ways you can do this as well. You can put in reference numbers after a drawing is created. So if this was completely blank, I could use the insert ladder command to insert just reference numbers or reference numbers with wires. There's multiple ways you can do it. This is my preference. Create the drawing. Sometimes I'll have, you know, one column of reference numbers. Other times you'll see two columns of reference numbers. Point is, they're already there. I don't have to manually put them in. I don't have to manually call them anything. Now, like I said before, let's say I got a brand new drawing from scratch, and this is just one example. And let's say I'm building it as a three-phase drawing. So I'm going to go start with my multiple bus command here. Oh, let me turn my snap on first. I'm going to go to my multiple bus command. And I'm going to say I want the spacing to be 1 on the horizontal side. And I'll leave it as 0.5 on the vertical side. And I want to start it in an empty space. And I'll pick OK. And I'll start it right here. In the beauty of this, as you can see, I'm able to draw more than one wire at a time. And if you notice there, this is unlimited. You get into point to point drawings, you could draw 50 wires at the same time if you wanted to. How many times can you do that in regular AutoCAD when you think about it? Now, here I'm going to start with another bus. And let's say I just start it right here. And again, I could create multiple. I could create six wires at the same time instead of just three in that particular case. Or like I said before, you can bump that number up to anything you want. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to insert some three-phase symbols. Like I said, this is exactly if you're starting from scratch. You know, I'm just starting from scratch with the drawing. And I'll start with some, I'll start with a breaker. Just give me a simple three-pole breaker. I'm going to keep this simple as possible just for time purposes. Just like before, tag comes in automatically. I can put in descriptions, part numbers. Let me give it a location code just for the heck of it. Call this one machine. And a lot, sometimes, like, see the rating down here kind of like with the pin information that automatically got populated with my relay coil. You can also, if I did put a part number on this, let's go with a three pole breaker. And I'll go with a 15 amp. I'll pick the very first one. Notice that the amperage automatically fills in in the rating category. These are attributes that are tied to blocks. I can't stress that enough. These are standard AutoCAD blocks with attributes. What makes them smart is there's a symbol naming convention and specific attribute names that you have to have. You can still add more attributes after that. But these are AutoCAD blocks. If I hover my cursor over this, as you can see, it's a block. So I stress to everybody, if you're first looking at the software, don't throw anything out that you have in AutoCAD because we can reuse it. If you've got your own custom blocks created, fantastic. We can easily convert them to intelligent AutoCAD electrical symbols or components. They're still AutoCAD blocks with attributes. To finish this, because I just want to stress how easy it is to create a circuit, let me go to my motor control. And I'll just drop down a three-phase starter with overloads. We'll put that right here. I'll build these down. This is a child symbol. Haven't established the parent yet, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'll just put down a couple more here just to save us some time. This is just an example of starting something from scratch. Let's go to the disconnects this time. And I'll just pick a three pole disconnect. I'll put out here. And I'll put 
put down a location code, a machine. And then I'm going to drop a motor down there. Watch what happens here as far as a draft, more nice just drafting features are concerned. I'm going to take this symbol. I'm going to drop it on the end of the wire here. And if I pick OK, notice that the wires clean themselves up automatically for a motor. Pure, nice drafting features. That's all in that particular case. Now, like I said before, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm doing a design and I decide, you know, I'm going to have this situation on every single project or a lot of them or, you know, even if it's a few, I don't want to ever have to create this again. I don't want to have to worry about, even if I created it, worry about finding it. Part of the process of learning AutoCAD Electrical is to create your own custom circuits and put them in your own custom folder, your company folder. So as an example here, I'm going to come up and save this to an icon menu just by picking Save Circuit to Icon Menu. I'm going to right click down here, add an icon, pick new circuit. And I'll call it, you know, whatever. MTR circuit. Could put three phase in there, whatever. Call it anything I want. The image itself. You could create a PNG file, PNG files, just like a JPEG file that you could throw together in a Microsoft Paint or obviously a more sophisticated package, but you can also create these on the fly by using your screen. I'm gonna zoom in as close as I possibly can. It does take a lot of real estate and scrunch it down. So it's not like I have to include the whole thing here. I'm just gonna hit enter. In the file name, I'll make the same as the other two. Pick OK. Now I still have to establish the circuit, and this is just like creating an AutoCAD block. Look at my command line right now. I got to pick a base point. Let's pick a base point right here. Let's select all the object that we want included in the circuit. I'll pick OK. Now, hypothetically speaking, let's say I was in another drawing. Let's say I was in a completely different project six months from now. So at this point, I could go to my insert save circuit. Here it is right here. Select OK. Drop it in. And once again, Notice all the tags update automatically. Anything else that I had as part of these symbols. The nice part is, and what this is actually doing for you AutoCAD experts out there is it creates a block on the fly and then automatically explodes it once it gets into the drawing. So I inserted this whole thing at the same time, but it still gives me individual control over each item. That's the beauty of it. The symbols themselves, you know, these are hardcore blocks, can't modify them. Don't want to explode them, obviously. But the circuits themselves, once you insert them, they go back to their original entities, including wires, including the symbols themselves. Can't stress enough, that's one of the, how we reuse data, but two things to look at here. How quick did I just put that together? The three wires up here, my, symbols. I didn't have to insert any tie points. I didn't have to insert any of these skips that you have right here. Just the creation of it alone, I saved a ton of time. And then when I want to reuse it again, I'm going to save a ton of time. This is the stuff that we can do in AutoCAD Electrical that we just can't do in AutoCAD. One other thing I'd like to mention here, or a couple things. Let me do this first. PLC drawings. Let's say I want to create another new drawing. Now let's go to a PLC drawing first of all. Here's a typical PLC drawing. And I'll even use this right now before I insert a PLC and show you some of the benefits that 
we can use an electrical that we can't use in AutoCAD with PLCs. But while we're on a PLC drawing, I always like to include my fluid power friends, for those of you that have to design your pneumatics or your hydraulics or your PNIDs. We can use AutoCAD Electrical for all of those, and you can establish relationship between parent-child symbols. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my icon menu. And notice in my icon menu, I have a custom category. All of these out of the box. You create your own custom symbols, you should put them in your own custom library. This is just an example. So I'm going to insert this proc switch. I'm going to drop it down right here. And once again, just to save us some time, I'm going to pick my pin press description. I don't need to bother with a part number, location code. I'll call it MCAB5 as an example. And I'll select OK. Nothing earth shattering going on right here. It's a proc switch, right? I'll go up to my output card. I'm going to do kind of the same thing. And I'm going to put a solenoid symbol down. And once I drop the solenoid symbol down, I'll go back to defaults and select this piece of text. And once again, I'll choose the MCAT 5 as the location. So, a couple more symbols. Now I'm going to go to my fluid power drawing. And this is typical, right? You're showing your proc switch at the pneumatic level. In this case, I'm on a pneumatic drawing. And I'm showing it on the output card. I want to be able to link the two together. I make a change to one, the other one updates, just like you saw with the relay coil and its contacts. And the only main reason why I like to show this is that, you know, the relay coil and the contacts, yeah, that's a great example of a parent-child symbol, but it's not the only parent-child. You can create any parent-child relationship out of any symbols or symbol or symbols that you want. You're not restricted. All you're doing is linking a couple of components together. So this time, I'll go back to here, and I'll select my pneumatic proc switch, and I'll drop this down. I'm just going to eyeball. Hopefully, this gives me enough space above it. Line it up right here. And I'm going to go to my project, and I'm going to assign this, you know, the proc switch that I just dropped down. It'll carry everything over just like you saw before. Now I've got that linked to, as you can see, sheet five, line nine, that's where the parent symbol is. If I go down to the solenoid area down here, same thing. I'll go to my custom, go to my pneumatic symbol this time, select my project, Here's the one I just dropped down. So now if I right click on this and I go to Surfer and I take a look at the parent symbol, as you can see, this has been updated as well. Sheet 11, line nine, that's where the equivalent pneumatic symbol is. Prox did the same thing. Like I said, I just like to show that to people because you, you can you can link any components together that you want. You're not restricted to any. Going back to the main point, how difficult would that task have been if I'm using regular AutoCAD in my pneumatic drawing? Everything would be manual. If I'd made any changes to it, just like I'm going to do now, you know, let's say I change the, I don't know, I'll change the tag. I'll use the PLC address on the tag. So now it's SOL 0 colon 2200 instead of using the sheet line reference. Update other drawings. Absolutely. So now 
instead of that being SOL 502, it changed it to the PLC address and then automatically updated the pneumatic as well. Obviously, I probably want to move that attribute out of the way or change its size, whatever, so it's not running into here. But the main point is you make a change to one, the other one updates automatically. That would be very difficult to do inside of regular AutoCAD. Let's go back to my panel drawing. Oh, still got it open. And I just briefly want to talk about terminals. Terminals have a lot of power inside of AutoCAD Electrical. I've got a terminal strip right here. You could show wiring information on these terminals, or you could just show the physical representation like you see here with the proper terminal numbers. If I go to my panel drawing and I go to my editor, this is my terminal editor, and I'm going to select, let's say, this terminal strip right here. This will list all your terminal strips in your project. Now, terminals, right? All of these have been assigned at the schematic level. I inserted the terminal symbol in the schematic just like any other one. But how do I account for spares? How do I account for accessories like end barriers and separator blocks? Well, I can insert those. Now these will only affect the BOM inside the panel, or it will give me a complete BOM for the whole project. Let's say I want to add a couple of them, and I'll insert below. So I got a couple spares. Problem right now is it doesn't have any part number on it. Well, let me copy the part number information from the other two. And I'll paste it in here. That's good to go. If I go to the layout preview, here it is right here. And like I said, you can show wiring information. Usually we don't do that on the physical representation. As you can see here, I'm showing the wire number, size and the color on each side of the terminal. A lot of times we don't show it at the graphical level. But if you want to show the wiring information, what a lot of people are doing nowadays is showing it in a table. So this is the same exact terminal strip. It's just not a physical representation. But now at least I could read, you know, all the wiring information in the table. And I could take this, insert it into an existing drawing, have it automatically create a new drawing for me if that's what I chose. If I do want to insert the graphical representation, there it is, full scale, one-to-one. -one. Pick insert. Insert it into my drawing. There's my terminal strip. So we use a combination of the schematic and the panel, but it's really very similar to what I just did with the relay. This is a physical representation of all the terminals for this particular strip, wherever they, they could be in 10 different drawings in my schematic. So the beauty of this is, which obviously we can't do in regular AutoCAD, is it's going to keep track of every single terminal strip that you have in your project. You can add spares and accessories like I did. Now they're accountable for the bill of material, and just like anything else, you make a change at the schematic level or the footprint level, the other one will update as well. Can't do that in regular AutoCAD, obviously. As far as PLCs are concerned, I started to get into that, and I'm going to end it here shortly. I just want to show you real quick the beauty of, well, let me just go to, well, this is fine. PLC symbols, one of the advantages that we do have Let's say I'm just going to drop this out in the middle of nowhere, PLC symbol. I can allow for spacers and breaks. So essentially, inside of AutoCAD Electrical, I can break 
the PLC module up. Maybe I wanted to show, you know, want to break it up in the same drawing or I want to break it up into different drawings. So I would say, okay, here, give it rack information, give it slot information. We've got a list of addressing that you could choose. You don't have to use these. You can use anything you want. But as you can see here, it's building the block for me on the fly. Every single time I insert next IO point, it's going to drop one down. Well, maybe I need some spacing, a little bit extra real estate between terminals here. I could add a spacer. I could keep adding the IO points. Now maybe I want to break the module because I want to show the rest of it somewhere else. Doesn't matter where. I'll say break module now. I'll choose decimal for the addressing. And then, like I said, I could insert this right now, which I'll do to save some time. Or I could hit escape and go to another drawing and insert the rest of it. This time I'll just say insert all. This is what I love about the PLC modules. The way they work inside of AutoCAD Electrical is they're flexible. I just broke this module apart, added a space over here. And I could break it apart into, you know, two, three, four even. Doesn't matter. Now I'm going to go to reports and talk about reports and the beauty of them. Obviously, we can't do any report generation inside of AutoCAD. What are... What am I talking about with the reports? Bills of material is a big one. A wire point-to-point -point report is another big one. We actually had somebody buy the software just for the wire label report, which I'll explain in a minute. But let's say I want to run a bill of material. Let me go back to my panel drawing here. And I'm going to run a panel bill of material. I want to process all my drawings. Here's a complete bill of material for my panel right here. And the beauty of the reports, and I've used two other competitive packages. They all have never, I would never bash any one of them. We all do, we all have strong suits, we all have weak suits. I think, based off my experience, reports inside of AutoCAD Electrical is phenomenal. And the main reason is how easy it is to configure it to make it your own. Right here, I got item, I got quantity, I got manufacturer, catalog, description. But I'm also, I also have some user fields. Maybe I don't want those user fields. I don't have to exit the software. I don't have to open up a separate database, create fields, tables, whatever, move them around. I'm good to go. So let's say I don't want these user fields. This is how easy it is to get rid of them. Maybe I have some sub quantities in here that I want to include. There's a sub quantity. Maybe I want to move that up underneath item number. Just like that, I completely reconfigured my report. Now what do I want to do with it? And you can do this with any report. This time I'll say put on drawing. I'll choose a different table style. Select OK. And it's not going to fit, so obviously I would put this on another drawing, what have you. But the point is, I can insert it directly into my drawing. There's my bill of material, and it's very popular with panel drawings because now you can tie, tie balloons to all the item numbers that you see here in the bill of material. Can't do that, can't do any report generation inside of AutoCAD. Just a couple of more of the popular ones. A wire from to report. You know, let's say I want to do the whole project on my wire from to report, but you know, maybe you're trying to help people out in the field and you want to pull a report down, you know, just for all the wiring that goes from, you know, machine to MCAB 5 or my operator box. Here's a complete point to point wire report for just those locations. Tell me the wire number, where it's coming from, where it's going to, the size of it, all that good stuff. Well, maybe you want to run a wire report for the whole project. Well, include all of location codes. Obviously, now it's going to get a little bit bigger. So here's a complete point-to-point -point wire report for the whole project. And 
besides being able to save any of the reports onto a drawing, you can also save them to a file. I could take this directly to an Excel spreadsheet, point it to the folder where I want it to go, name it anything I want. Just like that, I've got an Excel spreadsheet of my point-to-point -point wire report. So you can take any report, save it to any one of these file formats, an ASCII text file, Excel, any of these, or you can place them right back onto a drawing. Another popular one, or just to go over, you know, PLC address and descriptions. You could take this report right here. Let's say you wrote the software first, you wrote the PLC program first, and then it's time, I'm sorry, let's say you did the hardware first. I did here first, and then it's time to write the PLC program. You could take a version of this file and bring it into your PLC program via a text file or an Excel spreadsheet, and you can save yourself some typing time on all the descriptions, so you don't have to type it in twice. Cable reports, you know, this is just like a wire from two. This is popular. So you can get a detailed point to point for all the conductors that are inside of a cable. It'll list the cable itself, color code, wire number if you have one, where it's coming from, where it's going to. And like I said, we had somebody buy the software just for the wire label report, and I'm not lying on that one. No more having to sit down, take your drawings, write all your wire numbers, your labels down, and then fat, fat finger them into a label machine. Here's every label it's accounted for with the exact quantity. And then once again, I can save this to a file in most label machines, whether it's a Brady or something else, we'll take one of these formats. So you're done in an instant, no manual process. Obviously we can't do that in regular AutoCAD. I'm gonna show you one more thing because I'm sure Ashley and Julia are really ready to yell at me. I could go on and on. Um, title block. Swear to God, we had somebody buy the software just for the ability to be able to update title blocks across the, a project. As you can see here, I've got title block information. Well, maybe I want to change some of that title block information. So I'm going to go to my descriptions here. And let's say the part number changed to 56789, and I'm going to call this station one instead. Whatever. All I'm doing, as you can see here, these are all attributes that are tied to a title block. So you make that change. Well, now I can update the whole project instead of having to do this manually one drawing at a time because I want those to be reflected and maybe I want to update all my sheet numbers and the total number of sheets because I've added to this project I'll say okay project wide I'll do all my drawings and just like that you can see the changes that just happened I changed the description here changed the part number here and if I go and open up another drawing from the project, you can see that they've been updated here as well. So no more have to manually open up one drawing at a time, go into the title block, make the change, get out. Either or. It's all done. So I've only scratched the surface, but obviously your time is valuable. Mine is. If anybody wants more information or you want your own personal demo, let your account reps know and we'll make that happen. At this point, I'm gonna hand it back over to Ashley and we'll talk about questions. I know Julie's been on here answering questions probably as fast as she can, but if we have more, we'll get them answered now. If we can't get them answered now, then obviously send an email to us and we'll get them answered at that point. It's all yours, Ashley. 
Okay, um, Julia, were there any outstanding questions that um, Greg needed to go over? No, I think uh, we have just about everything covered. Um, the one question, and Greg, you may want to just cover this quickly, um, is about wire lengths. Um, obviously, you can add a manual user field, uh, but you want to talk a little bit about how we can calculate wire lengths? Well, the only way we can do it, we can't do it inside of AutoCAD Electrical, but we can do it with the electromechanical capability, which is a phenomenal tool. Any of you out there have Inventor, you use Inventor as part of your company. This is what we use to get all the correct wire lengths in the routing of the wires. So essentially the way it works in a nutshell is I can take a file out of the AutoCAD Electric project. It's it's a report, just like all the reports that, you know, some of the reports that I just ran right here. It brings it into Inventor. We share a common parts database. We share a project, essentially. So any of the wires that it sees at the schematic level, now it will see it at the Inventor level, and then at the Inventor level, somebody can route every single wire, show every single tie wrap, every connection point from a physical representation. And when you, when you draw it physically inside of Inventor, you're going to get exact wire lengths. The best we can do inside of AutoCAD Electric, as far as lengths are concerned, is to attach the information to one of the user fields. So as an example with that, I could plug in, if I knew, you know, you have to know, obviously, what it is, but I could plug in the wire lengths right here, pull that out into a report, you know, and then I could get totals as far as that's concerned. Hey, Greg, just one, one more quick question, because I think this is pretty easy. Um, if somebody has AutoCAD Electrical installed, but they're using the um, vanilla user interface, interface how does somebody add the electrical toolbars? Well, that's twofold. When you install the software, you're going to get two shortcuts. You're going to get one with a profile that's set up for AutoCAD. You're going to get another one with a profile that's set up for AutoCAD Electrical. You don't inter, you don't interact, you don't, you know, you don't mix them together. It's just two different profiles. If people are familiar with AutoCAD profiles. So when I open up AutoCAD Electrical, you know, I'm looking at this particular menu. I could close this down and open up regular AutoCAD with an AutoCAD shortcut, and I'm not going to see any of the AutoCAD Electrical tools. And on the same note, if you're working with customers or vendors that aren't using AutoCAD Electrical, you can still pass them along native DWG files out of AutoCAD Electrical and they can open them up in AutoCAD LT for that matter. They just have another DWG drawing with a, with a bunch of geometry in it, essentially. So it's native DWG, always, always, always. Anything else? I don't see anything else, but um, you know, once again, we thank you for your time. Ashley's going to get this wrapped up, but uh, we'd love to work with you on your individual uh, case. It, it, while everybody's kind of the same, everybody has something very different that they need, and we look forward to working with you. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, this will conclude our broadcast. If you have additional questions later, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email you received from GoTo go to webinar we can get those to Greg or your sales rep to get those answered for you once again if you could take a few moments to fill out the survey we would appreciate it it will just pop up as we close down today thanks for attending everyone and have a great day thank you